Good morning Mars, in this video we will be looking at how I painted the scattered terrain for Gasland Cement City as seen debuted in episode 5. We are going to get right into it and start painting these tire stacks. We paint them by first dry brushing them a nice cool grey. In this case I use scale 75 graphite. Scale 75 paint is nicely pigmented and takes very well to dry brushing. After the initial layer of grey, we come in with some Terminato Stone, which is a technical GW paint meant for dry brushing. I have mentioned this before, but I am a big fan of the GW dry brushing range. They do what they say on the tin. If you do a lot of dry brushing, I do recommend getting a few pots. We won't be going too nuts on these scatter terrain pieces, as in I won't be using my airbrush much because I will be doing most of them with graph paints just to make them more accessible. The wheels are pretty much done now. I could weather them, but I don't really want to bother because it makes them like show up less obviously. So we are going to move on to the barrels, which I will be weathering. I will be using the hairspray chipping method here, which is perfect for hand brushing. I have a more in-depth video on that method up here if you are curious. So the plan for this one will be to do a rust color first, then we will lay down the hairspray layer, and then after that dries we lay down the colors of the barrel. I will be going for orange rust and then red and blue barrels. What I am doing at the moment is layering up dry brushes to a nice reddish brown so that the orange can come on more clean. Now we start on the orange proper. Like the previous layers, we just dry brush it onto the models. Since it's going onto layered red, it comes on a lot less splotchy than if we dry brushed it onto the black primer. We're gonna do this for all the models, just covering everything, even the wheels, so that is fine. At this point, it's faster to just hit everything and get a nice even coat rather than trying to miss out on specific details. We're gonna paint over most of this again anyway. Once that is done, you'll get a nice orange with tinges of red and brown, and honestly, that is fine for certain setups. If you're going for a real scrapyard look, just paint in the tires and you're good to go. After the coat of orange is dry, we give it a spritz with the hairspray. We will give the hairspray a solid R to dry just to be sure. I decant my hairspray and load it into an airbrush, but you can absolutely just use the default spray head. Once the hairspray dries, we go in with our color of choice, using an overbrush. I've gone with a smaller brush here, just so I have a little bit more control. I try not to cover absolutely everything on the model, leaving those shadows in really helps with definition. Now, at this stage, as you paint over the hairspray, you have to be mindful of how much water you have in your paint mixture. I am using Craftsor Acrylics here, and straight out of the tube, their texture is absolutely fine for my purposes, so I did not dilute them any further. Craft Store Acrylics are really good for overbrushing and dry brushing. If you go in with too much water at this point, it will start dissolving the hairspray coat and you will end up with a much messier paint job. Right now, I am applying the blue paint to things that I want painted blue. The blue overbrush will not blend in with the orange as readily as the red. However, it will turn up better after the chipping, because of the nice contrast between the orange and the blue. For this next step, all I do is paint in all the tires black. I do this with Mars Black, again another craft store acrylic, but this time I thin it a little bit with water. These are tires, so I want them to be a solid color, so I'm going in with a regular base coat. I am just careful to keep the paint a tiny bit thicker than usual, just so it does not eat away at the hairspray coat. Now before I start chipping, I'm going to apply a dry brush of the same gray I started with on the tires. So that's the scale 75 graphite. This is just for the sake of aging up our base coat, so they look a little bit more weathered. We will give all the models this dry brush, hitting up all the colors with the gray, just so it makes it more uniform with the tires, as well as with the Cement City boards. Once the dry brush is done, we start our chipping with a stiff brush. This will turn up much better on the blue barrels, but it will still give the red a nice rusty look. More important perhaps than the color, it will give the model a legitimately chipped texture that contributes a lot to it looking more weathered. We make sure to avoid chipping away at the tires, which we very carefully painted black. Once we finish with the chipping, we can go over the entire thing with a dry brush of Terminato Stone, the same hot edge color we use for the tires. If you want to use Craft Store Acrylic, sand is a good approximation of Terminato Stone. 
my local craft store doesn't stock gray craft acrylics for some reason, so I use the modeling ones for this video. Once all that is done, we just go in with some gunmetal and paint in the metal bits of the wheels. I don't bother washing the metal, cause I make a point to not wash terrain, cause it's a good way to eat through all your wash. And I like how the bright gunmetal looks next to all the desaturated colors. And once that coat is finished, we are done. This is a quick and easy methodology to painting up terrain, and it can let you bang out a good amount of it in one afternoon. When painting terrain of this size, I prefer to hand brush as opposed to airbrushing. Dry brushing in particular is a good technique to wrap your head around, especially for painting terrain. You could apply this methodology of painting to other solid colored things, such as containers. Now, if you are wondering where they came from, these models are 3D printed. I will be providing a list of the STLs I use in the description of the video. And while you're down there in the description, if you've enjoyed the video or found it helpful, consider giving us a like and subscribe, it is especially useful to me as a small channel. If you have some thoughts on the paint job or some techniques you would like to share, feel free to tell us all about it in the comments. Now along with those terrain pieces, we did also debut one more thing during the last leg of Seaman City. These are turrets, also 3D printed, also from Thingiverse, also in the link in the description of this video, if you are curious. These are a staple of Gasland scenarios, and having 3-5 to five models of them is very handy. To paint these, we will start off with a coat of black Vallejo primer. And for the look I would like, I am going to apply a Zenithal highlight with my airbrush. A Zenithal highlight is just a blast of lighter colored paint from the top or from an angle, mostly from an airbrush, sometimes from a reticle can, and the intent is to give the model a nice color gradient from bottom to top. Here I use scale 75 graphite and then top it off with a little bit of pure white. After the Zenithal, I block out all the other colors, specifically the scale 75 Kalahari orange and the scale 75 thrash metal. Once those were down, I gave everything a wash of Agrax Earthshade. This takes the stark cold bite out of that Zenithal gray from earlier, and warms up the models a fair bit. It also does its usual job of getting into the crevices and giving the model a bit more definition. The next couple of steps will be edge highlighting, and as is usual for my videos, I won't be showing it because I find it difficult to film while edge highlighting. This is a fairly simple highlight job though, and you can probably see it is done in two layers. The first highlight layer is just the same base color reapplied to the model as an edge highlight at the appropriate spot. The more extreme highlights, both on the gray and on the orange, are scale 75 birch. And the final step is just an edge highlight of heavy metal, which is scale 75's bright silver, onto the much warmer base coat of gunmetal. I do this for most of my silver metallics, as covered in the Dust Dragons video. If you've seen Dr. Vitus's car, the death trap, in the battle reports, that's basically his entire color scheme. And with that, the turrets are done. Here is the circle tracker to give you an idea of how big they are. We will be seeing all the terrain in this video used quite frequently in the near future. And that is us for this video, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.